Hi, I'm Justin Mason from Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. And today we're going to do a comparison on the Mercedes GLC 300 Coupe versus the NX 350 in the S4 package to be able to go through which car might be right for you. But before we get into the video, make sure you hit like and subscribe for more Lexus related content. So getting right into it, beside me, the GLC 300 Coupe. Under the hood, we have a four cylinder, two liter engine, producing around 250 horsepower, versus the NX, which is a 2.4 liter, with about 270 horsepower. I do think the Mercedes has a little bit more torque, I think maybe like 290 torque, I can't remember the torque on this one. But let's look at some styling. The first thing you'll notice on the Mercedes is some really nice accent lighting, both on the top and bottom of the headlight with a black housing and a, sort of like a triple LED headlight design. We have some hidden sensors here, some sort of integrated into these canards that we have, as well as more of like a cross traffic or, or side marker. I do notice that the bottom of that bumper is a little bit higher than the NX, and it kind of flows into the new Mercedes grill with a massive Mercedes emblem in the center that also doubles as some sensors because I see some heating elements in there, which is great for winter because that is a really big Mercedes emblem. So you don't want all the snow and ice to pile up on there and not be able to use it the way it's supposed to. In terms of design language of the hood, we do have some body lines that you probably can't see on camera because the white color sort of washes it away, but we have a little bit of flow there and a very sort of stubby, drop off on the nose that gives the vehicle a little bit more of a taller look than it probably is and it also looks a little bit wider because of it's not chiseling down to a nose it's kind of just like rounding off and dropping down over to the nx a little bit different we have more of an exaggerated front grille where that bumper goes really far down and it starts a little bit higher as well. And we have a little bit of a lip on the bottom, the daytime running lights on the top of the headlight, and that's it. With the windshield washer uh, little trap door that a lot of people forget that some Lexuses still have, which is really, really cool. Some sensors obviously hidden into the bumper and the grill, and then that massive F-Sport grill that just catches your eye. It takes, it takes up a lot of the, the real estate on that front bumper and is blacked out on the edges of it. And then obviously we have the Lexus emblem there. The hood has some body lines that curve and then wrap around to the side. Instead of multiple, it's sort of just one on each side. But again, makes for a pretty big looking fender and top of the bumper here as well, uh, where it doesn't just go from hood to drop off. It kind of starts the bumper and that protrudes out a little bit more as well. Okay, taking a look at the side profile of the GLC, I'm super excited about it. There's a lot of really cool things to talk about here. I'll start at the front. So at the front, we have this really small fender. I guess in this little space here, it's only about 10 inches and then it opens up, but even when it opens up, it's not super big. But even more cool than that, on these 20 inch wheels, which by the way, are 255 wide tires, where the NX is like 235, really wide stance. Inside, there's like, this overlap where the part of the strut or part of the wishbone or whatever is actually just like a small little space above the tire. Like the tire's actually underneath a bit of that suspension. Obviously the suspension moves up and down with the tire so it's never gonna like hit a bump and hit it. But very small nuances there so definitely no one can put a bigger tire on this I don't think. But it is already an all season and like I said it's 255 so why would you need anything bigger than that? Mercedes made this small SUV to look like a coupe and to feel like a coupe. And that's what it looks like. If you were to just chop off the bottom and only, you know, look at the top, you would think it is a coupe. We have this very swooping silhouette that's not very tall. And the doors are sort of big like a coupe, especially in the front. Mirror body colored with a little bit of a, a signal in here. We have running boards. I actually don't know if they all come with running boards. I just know that this one has the running boards, which is cool, I guess. We have some chrome on the handle. Now the chrome doesn't match the chrome that's circling the windows. I'm not too, too sure why, but it's close enough. I think no one would really notice that unless you look up closely. And then to the back. So this back part of the side profile is really, really cool. So it starts to really take shape towards the back and then at the actual hatch, drop right off. We have a little bit of a fender flare here. 
So when you're looking sort of dead on, or if the vehicle's on an angle, that back end looks really wide, sort of like a sports car, which I really like. Obviously the multi-spoke is like a two-tone with a little bit of silver. I like the way the center hub sort of looks. I'm not too, too sure why, but that does catch my eye a little bit. And overall, a great looking vehicle from the side. I will definitely give it that. So taking a look at the side of the NX, we do have a little bit taller of a vehicle. It is taller than the Mercedes, but otherwise than that, we have some similarities. It is still a 20 inch wheel, just like the Mercedes. However, it is a little bit skinnier of a tire, more in conjunction with what we're used to in this class. The Fender has the F-Sport badge, and then we have some pretty aggressive body lines, like this top body line here that follows through the door handle and flows up in most colors other than white and black. You can really see that, especially the one at the bottom as well. And at the bottom, we have some textured plastic. The Lexus does have the new electronic door handles, which I absolutely love. Blacked out mirror caps. The body sort of goes up first and then down, which is more like what most SUVs has to make that rear cabin space a little bit more usable for people and things. We do have smoked out chrome around the windows doesn't really match anything on the side other than I guess the mirror sort of gets tied into it. This one has some roof rack cross members and you can still operate the panel roof with them, which is pretty great. And then we just have this little quarter glass and then some aggressive body lines that sort of flow to that back. And the back still does have a little bit of a fender flare on that quarter panel, not as big as the Mercedes, but still there. So looking at the back of the NX, we have some beautiful taillights. So we have the little Lexus sort of signature, and then over top of that is that sort of infinity samurai sword style taillight that goes across. We do have a winter wiper. It is exposed, it's right in the middle, but that is great for getting the snow off in the winter time with that new Lexus emblem underneath it, L-E-X-U-S, instead of the old sort of L emblem. Back here we have some more angles, some more decorations, like these little vents on the side. Again, on the silvers and the grays, you can see a little bit more of the edginess to that rear profile. We do have a little bit of like a little Lexus emblem protector on the top of a little bit of that lip and a diffuser at the bottom with pretty much hidden exhaust pipes because in the future, there's not gonna be as many gas powered cars, there's gonna be more hybrid and EVs and Lexus wanted to make sure they fit in to make it a little more, more timeless. To open the trunk, we're just gonna squeeze underneath the X and we have a decent amount of space here. It's a really good height for loading things in and out. In fact, everything about the NX, the height is really nice for sitting in, but also for getting in and putting things in. It's always been great for that. We have one of those like soft tunnel covers that sort of folds up and you can put it somewhere. This one has a little bit of a cargo liner and a cargo net with some chrome uh, metal protectors as you're putting things in and out. Some grocery hangers. Those seats fold pretty much flat and there's a little bit of storage to the left for any of your loose things. Overall, really good for practical, everyday use, I guess you could say. Now, over to the Mercedes. Over to the GLC. So, the taillights I absolutely love. I think from further away, they are really sharp looking. I think the way the light kind of travels um, just looks very modern. It looks like a modern take on an old taillight. But the real winner of the back end of the Benz is this hatch. It's so cool, it definitely looks like a coupe. There is no exposed wiper at all, there's no wiper. It's got that fast back, hatchback sort of look. And we have this little lip here that drops off. And again, the whole side of the vehicle really comes down to this back part, which is really cool. Other features, we have a little bit of chrome at the bottom and some chrome exhaust ports, which again, we're starting to see disappear in the industry. A little bit of a diffuser. This one has a hitch. I'm not sure if that comes from the factory or not, but it's a little hitch. It's probably for activity mount, something like that. But let's look inside. To open it up, you just touch the Mercedes emblem and voila. It's a very nice height to get things in and out of. In fact, I'm about 6'1". It's just below my hip, I would say. Especially, it's probably a little bit higher to get things into than you know, the NX, for instance, but it's decently wide and decently long. Height-wise might be a problem if you're gonna stack anything too high, but I don't think you're gonna get this vehicle to be like a big cargo hauler, for instance. And I noticed underneath the fake floor, there's a decent amount of space down there. Even if you think that you're, you filled it up height-wise tr for the trunk, right beside that spare tire, there is a little bit more of a cavity. Seats fold down flat, it's like a 60-40-10 and there is even a switch back here for that and little grocery holders, which is always 
super, super important to me. Okay, so sitting in the GLC, there are so many things that I like about this, and some of them you're probably gonna think I'm silly for. The first one is I love the vents. What I love most about them, they do look great, they're symmetrical and everything like that, but when you center them, like when they're in the center, there's a little notch and you can actually hear it. I don't know if you can hear it right now. It makes it so it's sort of satisfying to have them in that little notch, like in the center, and it makes it look really great. A little Easter egg that I like. Okay, what about everything else? So we have some piano black, we have this screen that seems smaller than the rest of the industry, but as I'm looking at it, I don't think it needs to be any bigger. It's properly placed, it seems really easy to read and see. A little remote touch thing here. It definitely has come a long way over the years. I really like this one, you can kind of just swipe or scroll or just touch the screen, of course. Below the screen, we have some switches. These are mainly just for climate controls, menus, stuff like that. But I like that they're kind of like the old school toggle switches. And we see, even have some shortcuts for radio and some other buttons here. The hazard button kind of is hidden, I noticed, because it's in with those other ones. But it's still nice to just have shortcuts for anything. In a day and age where everything is controlled through a screen. Beside the little remote place here. We have the volume, which is still a wheel, which I'm super happy about. And then to the left, we have some like a driving switch or a driving mode switch. Some other shortcut buttons for like the cameras and things like that. And the armrest opens up sort of ambidextrously, where both sides can sort of open up with the press of one button. And then there's this big storage place here where I put a bunch of keys, where the two cup holders are. There's a little shelf. I don't think it's big enough for your phone. So I don't know where your phone's supposed to go, probably in the armrest, but it does look really nice when it's closed. It's very clean. It's a very simple sort of interior layout. Now, couple really cool things that impressed me on this car. There's this thing called augmented navigation where I didn't get a chance to use it, but I saw it online. I think it's super cool. This package has it apparently, where it uses like an augmented reality for your navigation. So you know how normally it would say like, turn right up here. This on the screen, you'll actually see in front of you what you're viewing and there'll be an arrow of where you're supposed to turn. I don't know if it would bring any value to me in terms of like not missing a turn because I feel like I'd still miss a turn if I'm not paying attention. But to some people, it's probably very helpful. If not, it's just cool and I like it. Another thing is the steering wheel controls is amazing. So we have an actual volume scrolly wheel knob. So it makes it really quick to be able to go volume up, volume down. Also, there's like these little touch pads that you can rest your thumbs on and that controls the screen as well, just with a swipe on the left or right. The one on the left does like your gauge cluster here and it's really easy and very responsive. And then the one on the right does all your radio stuff. Super, super cool. I wish I knew that the last time I drove a Mercedes, I wasn't able to use that feature the way that I now know how. We have some shifters, very small and quick. I mean, a lot of people probably won't even use those. Steering wheel itself, super comfortable, some nice metal, and it is metal trim around it. The other thing that Mercedes is doing a great job of, and I'll be the first to admit it, is the ambient lighting. When I was driving this thing, it was starting to get a little bit dark out. There's this really nice blue ambient lighting under the wheel wells on the door panels, it's very bright. Maybe some people would complain it's a distraction. For me, it's not, I think it's really cool. And it gives just a really nightclub vibe to the interior that I've always liked. We still have our seat controls on the door. So you always know where to see those. I do prefer them on the side of the, of the, um, the seat. That's just where I always look. But Mercedes has always done it there and people are used to it. It has really nice thigh support for a tall person. I will say that. Probably better than a lot of cars in this class. I still have decent headroom. Again, I'm 6'1". Probably if you're much taller than me, it's not gonna be great. I have the seat all the way down. So for me, it's fine. Anybody taller than me, you're gonna start to get into that headliner a little bit. Uh, so you might just have to recline a little bit. But other than that, absolutely great interior. Maybe not as many plush materials, but it makes up for it in classiness in terms of the coloring and layout and obviously the technology that I mentioned is pretty cool too. Okay, so sitting in the back of the GLC, again, I'm a little bit taller, so if you're any taller than me, you wouldn't really wanna be back here. My head's sort of touching, it's not the end of the world. The GLC is a little bit longer and wider than the NX, and that doesn't translate into the back seat. That space is used otherwhere, other places, just not here. But that's okay, because if I'm in the back seat here, I'm still comfortable, it's a good posture, we still have an armrest with cup holders. Oh wait, this opens up, so put your phone, and then we do have cup holders that sort of fold out, so that's totally fine. I could probably sit back here with one other person, maybe two. We also do have ambient lighting back here, 
and some little vents. They're pretty cute and they still do that little click that I like where you can center them. They do look different than the ones up there, a little bit. There's no knob in the center. I guess the knob is between them. This little trap door comes down and there's a couple different charging areas, USB-C, which is great. So this is where the coupe comes in, where this back, since it's tapering down to that really beautiful side silhouette with the hatch, this is where we're starting to sacrifice a little bit. It's not the end of the world though, guys. I think the styling is probably worth a little bit of that sacrifice if you're not driving around a ton of people all the time. So sitting in the NX from just coming out of the GLC, the first thing I notice is the posture. It definitely is a little bit more upright, do have a little bit more headroom because it's just a taller vehicle in general. The rest of the cabin is a little tighter. We have the big screen that is close enough that you just touch it, there's no remote anymore. We have our little wireless charging below that. A lot of the things for the NX are controlled through that screen. So your heated and cold seats, your heated steering wheel, all that stuff, the climate control, you're all just gonna do on there. So in the center, we really only have a few different buttons for like when you park and, and the parking brake and stuff. Cup holders are exposed right below that. We have the armrest that opens left and right and the F Sport steering wheel, which over the years has gotten so great and no one ever talks about it, but we have some really nice perforated leather where you put your hands and it gives you a really good grip of the wheel. We have the smart thumb thing, the smart touch for the heads up display where you just rest your thumbs on the steering wheel and that'll show you on your heads up display what those buttons do. So it's totally customizable. There's different pages and things like that. We have a really HD MID display there. We do have ambient lighting, but it's not very bright. In fact, we can't even really show it on camera because it doesn't really come in, but it's not much of a distraction. So if you're distracted by ambient lighting, the Lexus, it's very dim. It's sort of just a little touch when you're driving on a dark highway that, you know, shows you that you do have an interior around you. You're not just sitting in the darkness. And of course, we have the e-latch handles. So when you go to get out of the car, it's just so easy and smooth and it's just how all cars should be. Okay, so back seat of the NX. I do have a lot of space above me. This one has the panel roof. So it does make it seem a little bit lighter and bigger here where that's above me anyway. I do have a lot of space, I'm comfortable. There's not a ton of amenities back here. The leather's pretty soft. We have some cup holders and an armrest. The seats do recline a little bit. We have the electronic door latch on these as well with a little bit of ambient lighting and some vents and charging ports, but nothing too crazy. It does the trick. It's spacious enough that I can fit in here and not feel super claustrophobic and it's not bad. So. How do they drive though? What I noticed on the GLC is it does have a little bit of that personality of a coupe. What I mean by that is I can really feel that bigger wheelbase, the brakes, the bigger tires. It gave me a little bit more of a driving experience versus the NX, which admittedly is smoother, but can feel a little bit numb. I don't feel the bumps or the shape of the road as much as I did on the GLC, even though the NX has a little bit more horsepower. So if you want a little bit more feel of the road and, and feel like a coupe, the GLC would be the better bet. However, if you want something a little bit smoother, in my opinion, and still nimble, which is what the N stands for in NX, the NX would be a good purchase. So that poses the question, which one is for you? Well, the price is a big factor here, where this F Sport Series 2 NX for right now sells around the $66,000 mark. The way this one is spec'd out, the GLC is more like 76,000. So it's a $10,000 jump for something that's sort of in the same class. It might be a little bit more closer to the RX, but maybe smack dab in the middle between the NX and the RX. But it all just depends on what you want. You have a little bit more space in the NX, but you have a little bit more of that coupe styling in the GLC. So they probably check different boxes for different people, I would say. That's all I have to say about it. Both are great choices. And big thank you to Performance Mercedes for giving us the GLC on loan today. If you watch this video and you like the GLC and you wanna buy one, definitely go to Performance Mercedes and check it out. Thank you for watching this video. I'm Dustin Mason from Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought and which one you would choose and if there's any other comparisons you think that I should do between the two brands. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.